Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to create a sort of a front-end application using vanilla JavaScript that interacts with a back-end API uh, and in this tutorial we're going to build some sort of a UI that fetches the data from the back-end and shows it or presents it in the front-end, right? So let's get started. If you remember in the previous tutorial, if you haven't watched it though, I'll put the link down there in the description. Go ahead and check it out. In that tutorial, we built a simple uh, backend API using Happy Library, uh, which is a library in Node.js, uh, and uh, it only has uh, one endpoint slash resources where uh, what it does when you hit that endpoint, you get a response, which is like uh, an array of two objects that have name, type, and platform. And in order to run it, you can do uh, node, it's index.js, and it says that server is now running at HTTP localhost 80. So if I take this in a new terminal window, if I do curl, and HTTP localhost port 8000 and the endpoint, which is slash resources, you're going to see that we get our array. Now, how are we going to like get it in the front end application? So I'm going to go to the Kotus.com front end, the Codeness online editor, the editor that uh, I usually use. Uh, I'm going to make it a, a little bit smaller so that we can see things. And then uh, I'm going to go to uh, the backend API. We have these resources. So now, how we usually do it in the... I'm just going to make it full screen. How do we fetch the data from the backend API in the frontend? The easiest way is uh, the, an API in JavaScript called fetch. So if I go to Google and type JavaScript fetch uh, it show it goes to this uh, it shows this uh, result fetch API if I'm gonna go if I go inside it uh, it has some you know description which I'm gonna talk a little bit about it and then here it has like using fetch and it actually has a pretty easy example as you can see here so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna copy this go to the editor and then in the JavaScript section, I'm going to paste it, right? And I know for fact that the address to my backend is HTTP localhost 8000 slash resources, right? So what it does is that it says, let's fetch from this endpoint. And then when you got the response, we pass a function with the response. Since we know that our response is uh, of content type JSON, which is a JavaScript uh, notation. In our case, obviously it is. If I go back here, you'll see that this is actually of content type JSON. It's an array of JavaScript objects, right? So now what happens is that with this then function, it converts that result to JSON format, and then it gets that JSON, and then it console logs it. Uh, in the browser, right? But I don't want to do this, right? Let's take it out. Uh, and let's see what happens. Actually, let's open up the console and see what it really types, right? So if I just do console log my JSON, you will see that something interesting happens now. And that is like here in the resources preview, it actually calls my API, which is slash resources, with the endpoint slash resources, and actually shows me the result in the inspector of the Chrome. You can see that. One of the very important things when you have a front-end application that is stateless, and it calls a back-end API application, is something called cores, right? So if I search for cores here, you'll see that it talks about cross-origin resource sharing which is course, what it really means. It means that for the sake of security, when you're calling an API from a front-end application, which is not on the same domain and port, it's gonna reject it, right? I added a 
section here in the server in the happy server definition which says routes cores true if i comment this out and save it and go ahead and restart my server here so i'm just going to restart my server node.js now if i go to my front end application and try to run it again let's let's see what happens we are actually going to get an error and this is exactly what you're going to get this is related to course so it says no access control allow origin header is present on the resource requested our origin in the front end is codehost.com and we are calling a, a backend api on localhost 8000 right that's the reason that it doesn't allow our server our backend api doesn't allow codehost.com to actually reach out and fetch the data right so it actually fails to fetch so what i'm going to go do is in the back end i'm just going to comment it out and this is in happy this is how you enable cores or let pretty much any sort of front end application on any domain to be to be able to access this server even though this is now on my local host of course uh, it will not be visible on the internet but let's say i put this server on a public domain on internet and i get this enabled then any application who accesses this resource here will get this data and this is a security risk right for the purpose of this tutorial we just enabled cores for anything but you also can go ahead and add some parameters which is out of outside of the scope of this tutorial to kind of tell if the front end application was on codehost.com or your you know designated domain then return the data otherwise it will return the same error which means that the front end application will not be able to get the results right but for now we're going to enable this and we're going to restart the server again and now if i go back if i run you'll see that we don't get any error and also in the network tab in the resources we get the data right now what are we going to do with this data now i'm going to just create something really simple here so i'm just going to create a container and then i will say okay i want my container to have a width of let's say 60 percent and then i want this to be actually centered on the screen and maybe have 100 pixel on the top margin and it's going to be auto on the left and right so if i just write container you'll see that it actually centers my container within the page right so if i give it a background color let's give it a background red so that you can see it literally centered it in the page right so this is basically a container that i'm going to use let's put it here let's remove this in javascript what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a reference to my container. So container document dot query selector, and then I just pass container class, right? All right. Now what I want to do is basically put a button. So I'm just going to put a button here, button slash button, and then I'm going to say load tutorials, right? So now we have this button. I usually go to kotus.com. Uh, I go to the front end using the front end uh, UI application. I'm just going to copy this URL to the CSS of Kotus UI library. Coming back here, and I'm just going to import it. It literally, what it does is for now, it actually just lets me. Uh, add some classes here so that I get a better button. So CDTBTN is the class I can use already taking shape and then maybe CDTBTN primary to give it a primary color and this is going to be my button, right? Okay, now what I want to do is that when I click on this button, I want to fetch the data and then I want to show the resulting data in, in some sort of like a div, right? So to be able to do that, I'm going to go ahead and put this fetch call in a function. Just going to create load tutorials. 
tutorials and then I just gonna paste it here right so when I call this it will load my data now instead of doing console log using my JSON I know that my JSON will be an array of two objects right so what I want to do is I'm just going to create a div um, and then I will call it I will use document.create element div and then I would say div.innerHTML I'm just going to put my JSON here so that you see how it looks and then since I already referenced my container I would do container.append child and then I just put my div right so if I call this it will create a div it will obviously put my JSON which I got from the backend in its HTML and then it will append that div in my container right so let's just let's just call load tutorials here and see what happens there you go so you you can see that it already appended this to my uh, container and now obviously you'll see it's object object because it's an it's it, this is how uh, inner HTML and it and an array works right so now since I know it's an array I can do my JSON dot for each it's an array of objects right so I will do my JSON for each I'll pass a function and here I have for example each of those elements here in my response so this one and then this one right so going back to the front end I do my JSON which I know it's an array maybe I just call it differently tutorials and then I just call it tutorials and then I pass a function to for each tutorial and then what happens is that I'm just going to copy and paste this code put it inside here right and instead of since we don't have any my JSON anyways we have a tutorial and I know that each of those objects have a name right you can see that now when I directly call load tutorials what happens it calls the backend as you can see it fetches these two then it loops over them using for each in JavaScript and then it basically creates a div and add the name of each of those right in the div uh, HTML now what I want to do instead of just calling the load tutorials I want to call it whenever I click on this load button right so I'm just going to reference my button here document.query selector and then I just give it a class uh, we have already some classes but an identifier like load toots and then I will just put load toots here now what I'm going to do instead of calling this directly I'm just going to say uh, what's the name of it this is load toots btn and now here I say load toots btn dot add event listener click and then I will pass a function to it and then within the function I paste load tutorials right so now you can see that whenever I load the page it doesn't really call this resources but as soon as I click on this it will actually load the tutorials with which respectively fetches our uh, it calls our endpoint fetches the data creates divs based on the data I have in my response and then it adds them to the it appends them to the container so now if I click on this you will see that it actually will do an HTTP call as you can see here right just to make it a little bit nicer maybe we can do because I know that it's a, it adds divs to the container I'm just gonna do border one pixel solid maybe DDD padding 10 pixels and then border radius 3 pixel and then margin top 10 pixels right so now you'll see that it's a little bit better now the only problem is that if I click on load tutorials it's gonna fetch the data again and it's gonna append it to the load 
to the to the container that I have right so if I do this again you will see that it's just going to go ahead it will call the resources but this is not exactly what I want right every time I call load tutorials I just want to see the results not the addition of the calls to the to the container that I have so in order to do that I can do one thing I need to just basically create a new maybe a new container maybe just call it like result container and then instead of this container that I'm passing here I'm just gonna reference this one so result container so this is going to be my result container and now what happens I'm just going to switch it to this view it's easier to see now if I click on load tutorials you see that I get the results back but it doesn't do it because I need to come here uh, load tutorials this is result container result container so everything looks all right this is also the result container so we are good and let's see why it doesn't do because we renamed it to result container now if i load this you will see that it again adds or appends because we are appending the divs so now the only thing i need to do whenever i call this i just want to make sure that my result container dot inner html gets purged or empty right now if I click on this, as many times I call it, it's going to just empty the container and it will add them. And of course we need to change our CSS a little bit. You will see that it actually not only calls the backend, as you can see here. You see, it calls the resources and it just puts the data, presents the data in the front end. So again, just reviewing what we really care for here is the fetch api in javascript passing our sort of endpoint that we want to call and then what happens is that we get the response in this callback and then we convert it to json and then we also it's a good thing with then and chaining uh, we can do then function this will be the resulting in the format of json and then we loop over, we do for each, passing a function tutorial. And for each of those, we create a div and we add it to our result container. And then we add the whole function call inside our load btn tutorial, uh, load toots button, right? So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and like and share if you liked it. And if you had any questions, don't hesitate adding a comment I will answer you right away so another thing that I was working on was uh, some sort of a uh, tools in the kotus.com so there is a tool section that is added over here right now I have a YAML to JSON converter so if you have a YAML file that you want to convert it to JSON or JSON to YAML you can use that so for example if I search for open open API tree uh, sort of examples I know that it, it the examples are in the format of YAML so as you can see YAML I can just do this copy the data of the YAML going back here I paste it in the YAML and you already see that we get the responsing JSON back, right? And if I do the same thing, assuming I have the JSON and I want to see the YAML, I paste it in the JSON and then you'll see that you have it in the YAML. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, and if you have, again, any questions, go ahead and put it in the comment section. I wish you a brilliant day or night. Goodbye.